Hi everyone, welcome back to the another video of Engineers Academy. So guys, over here in this video we are going to talk about the Stirling engine and Stirling cycle. So basically this particular Stirling engine is nothing but the modification of the previous Carnot engine, Carnot cycle basically. So in case of Carnot cycle, there are the four thermodynamic processes which is nothing but the isothermal expansion followed by the isentropic expansion, then isothermal compression followed by isentropic compression. So guys, over here, in case of Stirling cycle, this particular isentropic expansion and isentropic compression. So, so these processes over here, that is replaced by isochoric uh, cooling and isochoric heating. That is nothing but the constant volume cooling process and constant volume heating process. So guys, basically this is the same. This particular Stirling cycle is same as that of Carnot cycle. But over here, in case of uh, Stirling, Stirling cycle this particular these two processes are replaced by the isochoric heating and cooling process so guys welcome back to the another video of engineers academy myself Narendra, and you are watching the playlist of thermodynamics so over here in this playlist i'm going to explain you the laws derivations and different kinds of thermodynamic cycles and uh, other details guys so guys please watch my video till the end and guys if you are new to my educational channel over here please do subscribe and guys please press the bell icon also so guys let's begin with our today's topic that is nothing but the Stirling cycle basically so in 1816 robert Stirling made this particular engine that is nothing but the Stirling engine which works on this particular Stirling cycle so now over here in case of Stirling engine there will be a cylinder a piston will continuously reciprocate in that particular cylinder and the, the and the that particular cylinder is totally isolated and there will be an external source of heating will be there and due to the conductive walls of the cylinder the heat will goes inside the engine cylinder and due to that heat the reciprocation the piston will reciprocate into the engine cylinder so guys over here let's consider the m is the mass of the air which is there inside that particular in your cylinder so this particular volume of the volume or we can call it as a mass of air is constant over here so guys the, over here this is the reason basically so over here this is the constant volume heating and constant volume cooling process which occurs over here so as over here you can see that this is particular in this particular engine cylinder cylinder with the volume of the air remains constant so this is nothing but the this is nothing but the construction of this particular stalling engine so guys now let's talk about the processes over here so over here we can see that is the process 1 to 2 is nothing but the isothermal expansion process which is same as that of the Carnot engine Carnot cycle so in case of this isothermal uh, isothermal expansion you know the expansion takes place there that is the piston moves from you know piston moves like the expansion takes place over here the volume increases the pressure gets released the pressure decreases also also guys as this is the isothermal expansion the temperature remains constant the temperature remains constant so you will get a curve over here on pv diagram and you will get a straight line on ts diagram you can see over here this is the pv and ts diagram so after that the second stage is nothing but the isochoric that is the cooling process so the process from 2 to 3 is the isochoric cooling it means the cooling will occur at constant volume so over here in engine cylinder the volume will remain constant but at that particular point when piston reaches uh, you know a very far from that the source of heat then in that particular volume remains constant but over here the cooling will take place as there will be the piston will uh, you know far away from that particular source of it so that's the reason you know the over here the cooling will take place so this is nothing but the constant volume cooling process that is process 2 to 3 after from 3 to uh, 4 so that will be the compression stage so over here at this particular stage that will be the constant temperature compression so this is nothing but the isothermal compression that is from 3 to 4 the isothermal uh, compression will occur and over here the temperature remains constant but piston moves towards the source of it it means the compression will occur over here the volume gets reduced the pressure starts building up inside the engine cylinder the pressure which will, uh, will increase so we'll get a curve in a pv diagram over here so that is the process three to four is nothing but the isothermal compression so after the isothermal compression the isochoric heating will take place the piston 
will be like moving towards the source of the heat like consider let's consider the piston is at the midpoint now it is moving towards the source of it it means the total volume inside the cylinder that is the total volume of the air will remains constant but at this particular stage the temperature of the the temperature is will be increasing so that is nothing but the constant volume heating process so guys these are the four processes over here in this particular Stirling engine which works on this Stirling cycle basically. So now, so now let's move towards the calculations. So first of all, the first process is nothing but the isothermal expansion. So over here in this case of isothermal expansion, the heat gets added into the system and we can calculate this particular heat addition that is during the process 1 to 2 such as by using the same formula that we have used in the case of Carnot cycle. So guys, the uh, the formula is that is the same that is the 2.3 mr t1 into log that is v2 by v1 so guys over here the expansion takes place that is the so that's why the log r v2 by v1 uses used over here so v2 by v1 is the expansion ratio over here which can be denoted by the small letter r so the formula becomes 2.3 mr into t1 into log r so that will be the total addition during the process 1 to 2 so guys the next process is nothing but the process 2 to 3 that is nothing but the constant volume cooling process isochoric cooling process so guys now over here in this particular process the temperature will falls down into the engine cylinder but you have to understand the best part over here in this case of Stirling engine it uses a regenerator so guys which but this particular regenerator will absorb the heat rejected during the process 2 to 3 so now this particular regenerator will act as a heat exchanger so during the process 2 to 3 the heat gets rejected from the engine cylinder and that particular rejected heat will absorbed by the regenerator and that particular heat will again used during the uh, during the compression stage that is the constant volume heating stage so guys during this particular process 2 to 3 we can calculate the total heat gets rejected towards the regenerate towards the regenerator by using the formula of m c v into t2 minus t3 so that will be the formula to calculate the heat rejected towards the regenerator basically so guys moving ahead next is nothing but the compression stage so over here the isothermal compression will occur which is very similar to that of the carnot cycle as we have seen in our previous video so over here the same formula will be used that is the constant temperature heating will occur over here the constant temperature heating will occur over here the piston moves from uh, the, the pressure will increases the volume gets reduced over here. so guys we can calculate the total heat rejected by the air by using the same form that is 2.3 m r into t3 into log uh, v3 by v4 so over here the compression takes place so v3 by v4 will be your compression ratio and this particular compression ratio is denoted by small letter r so over here the formula becomes 2.3 m r into t3 into log r so this will be the same formula which is used to calculate the total heat gets rejected by the air towards the atmosphere so guys moving ahead the next stage is that is process 4 to 1 which is nothing but the constant volume heating process so over here the piston moves towards the source of the heat so as this particular temperature inside the engine cylinder will increases but over here we have used this particular regenerator so the air inside the engine cylinder will take heat from that regenerator so over here the heat gets supplied from regenerator or else heat absorbed by air into the engine cylinder will be m c v into t1 minus t4 so over here the t1 is at the higher temperature that will the t1 is the initial stage the point one is the initial stage the data total or process or cycle becomes reversible cycle so basically during the constant volume heating and constant volume cooling process the heat gets absorbed into the engine cylinder will be equal to the heat gets rejected from the engine cylinder towards the regenerator the whole purpose of the regenerator is to increase the efficiency of this cycle so this is the reason we you know while calculating the overall work done of the this particular uh, engine we do not consider the like the heat supplied and heat rejected as these are you know these nullifies each other so that's why 
while calculating the total work done will only consider the heat supplied during the process of the isothermal expansion and isothermal compression basically so guys now let's talk about the overall work done of this particular stirling cycle basically so now we can calculate the total overall work done will be the total heat supplied into the system minus the heat rejected so guys over here the heat supplied we have supplied the heat during the process of one to two that is nothing but the isothermal uh, expansion process and heat gets rejected at process three to four that will be the isothermal compression stage so guys uh, we can uh, calculate this particular total work done by using the formula that is a similar formula as we have used in case of cannot cycle that will be the 2.3 mr t1 into log r minus 2.3 mr t3 into log r so over here this will be the total formula to calculate the overall work done in case of this particular sterling engine which is very similar to that of the cannot engine so now let's talk about the efficiency the total overall efficiency of this particular cannot uh, of this particular sterling engine will be the total overall work done depends uh, divided by the total heat supplied it is, it is the ratio of total overall work done to the heat supplied so as we have got this work done we can uh, divide it by the total heat supplied so we will uh, like the equate all the formulas over here so at the end after like after doing the uh, at the end we'll get the total formula that will be the t1 minus t3 divided by the t1 so at the end if we like uh, from the numerator and denominator we'll get this particular one minus t3 by t1 so over here this will be the total formula to calculate the efficiency over here in sterling engine so guys this particular efficiency is very much similar to that of the cannot cycle but over here we have used this particular constant volume process as constant volume cooling and constant volume heating processes by using the regenerator basically so this is the main difference between the sterling engine and the cannot engine whereas in case of cannot engine there will be no physical or no practical engine gets manufactured but over here in the case of sterling engine we can see the overall construction the construction of this sterling engine is merely possible so we'll get the same efficiency as that of the cannot engine so guys i hope you understood this particular uh, sterling engine and sterling cycle so guys if you having any doubts any queries please do comment below and guys please do subscribe to my education channel engineers academy guys thank you for watching my video guys